Well, February is Heart Health Awareness Month, and this year, about 655,000 Americans will die from heart disease. So, my next guest's advice is extremely important for all of us. Joining me via Skype from St. Francis Hospital and Heart Center, Dr. Richard Schlafmitz, Chairman of Cardiology for Catholic Health, and we are so lucky to have St. Francis here on Long Island because for decades, it consistently ranks as one of the top hospitals in the nation for cardiac care and surgery. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. And as you pointed out, heart disease is affecting so many Americans in so many different ways. Typically, when we think of heart disease, people think of heart attacks, but you could have heart attacks, you could have valve problems, electrical problems, and all these different things affect everyone. And it's just not the typical person who's diabetic or hypertensive who is overweight. It affects all people, all races, uh, sex, gender. It makes no difference. Heart disease can affect everyone. And what's great about St. Francis is that we have tremendous staff from all over the world. Um, Ivy League schools train and our nurses are amazing in terms of taking care of patients with heart disease. And the technology we have is state of the art. We're doing valve replacements now without surgery. You can come in one day and the next day go home with a, a valve and, and walk home. What you're seeing here now is an angiogram. An angiogram is when we're taking a look at the coronary arteries. And the technology that St. Francis is a world leader in is something called optical coherence tomography. What you see here is during an angiogram, contrast is flowing through a coronary artery. But we use a technology where we put an imaging catheter actually inside the artery, which you see on the right side of the screen. And that lets us see exactly, precisely what's happening in the artery. Rather than guessing what's going on, we can measure with precision what type of morphology. Is the plaque made up of calcium, lipid, fat? We know the exact length of the blockage and the size of the artery. So when we do an angioplasty and stent at St. Francis, we fix that artery with precision, which is much more informative than just a regular angiogram. In fact, St. Francis is training people from all over the world. We have live conferences. People travel here to learn how to do OCT. And we're very proud that we're the world leader in this technology that has advanced angioplasty and stents to a whole different level. When it comes to heart disease, it's critical to recognize that you have a problem. Right. Although we can fix most problems either with defibrillators or ablation with electrophysiology or valve replacement or stents and bypass surgery, the first step is recognition. You have to know when you have a problem. And typically when people have problems with heart disease, coronary artery disease, and they run a risk of having a heart attack, they have symptoms. And when you have those symptoms, you need to seek help with your physician. Symptoms are typically chest pain or shortness of breath, precipitated by activity, and then relieved at rest. If anything like this were to happen, you certainly should seek your health professional. There are multiple non-invasive tests. We have these CT angios with non-invasive CAT scans to look at the heart arteries. We have echocardiograms to look at the heart function in the valves and stress tests, multiple non-invasive tests to help us find out if in fact the symptoms you have are related to coronary artery disease. Once we get you into the system, we can help you and save lives. And again, this is not just your typical person. It affects everyone, mm -hmm. whether you're thin or overweight, diabetic, hypertensive. It doesn't matter what color or sex you are. Anybody could be affected by something wrong with the heart. Doctor, are there, are there different signs or symptoms for a man and a woman? Do we have different you know, symptoms? People talk about that a lot. You know, I think what it comes down to is women historically are busy taking care of the family, they're working, they're juggling many different things. So they may put off the symptoms that they have where it becomes further down in the disease process. So rather than jumping to a doctor right away, no, I have to take my kids to soccer, I have to work, I have to cook, I have to do this and that. So they don't take care of themselves. The actual symptoms in the coronary artery disease, in my experience, is the same. You know, it's not gender related. If you have heart disease, you have heart disease. The key is to recognize it early. What is a symptom I, I need to worry about or anybody needs to worry about? So you're a healthy person, you look good, everything's fine. All of a sudden, when you're walking up a hill, you have tightness in your chest. And when you stop, the tightness goes away. You didn't make much of it, but now with minimal activities, that tightness is coming. It's exertionally brought on by our exertion, it stops at rest, and it's reproducible. That's angina. It's sort of like a garden hose bringing water to a lawn. If you have a kink in that garden hose, water doesn't get to the lawn, and if the hose shuts off the water altogether, the lawn dies. That's what a heart attack is, dead heart muscle. So the key is to get to us before you get to that level. You, you just showed us so many of the wonderful things you're doing at St. Francis. Now, with, the, with these advancements in treatments and, and obviously surgery too, more people surviving heart attacks? Absolutely. You know, 
recognition and quick treatment. We have a, um, a term door to balloon. When someone comes to the emergency room, we want to get them upstairs. We have a team available 24 hours a day. We can get the artery open and reperfuse and get the flow there. So prognosis is great um, in heart disease, in every form of heart disease, not just coronary artery disease, but valvular heart disease, electrophysiology, where you can have an arrhythmia, um, structural heart disease, where you have a cardiomyopathy. There's so much we can do for people. We just need to reach out. And, you know, interestingly enough, COVID is a terrible situation, but ironically, it's going to help us in the future in terms of delivering medicine. Because people who didn't have time to go see the doctor, they didn't want to wait two months to get an appointment. It was annoying to travel there. Now with telemedicine, we could see people live, talk to them, make a diagnosis over the telephone or on your computer, and then advise them what testing to go for. So I think Although COVID was a terrible situation, it brought telemedicine to a different level. And I think we're going to be able to now help people of all communities who might not have been um, searching for physicians to help them in the past. That's so true. I was thinking of COVID as being a negative thing because maybe adding to the risk factors, adding to stress, a lot of us sort of didn't exercise. Maybe we're eating the wrong things. But I didn't think about that, that, yeah, telemedicine is such a great advancement through, through COVID. Well, COVID was a problem for people with heart disease, as you well pointed out. People didn't go to their doctor because they were afraid to go out. They were afraid to go to the hospital. So people waited longer to see their doctor. So in the first six months, we saw really a very unstable situations in heart disease because people put things off. And there were also cardiac manifestations of COVID, inflammation of the heart muscle, myocarditis, fluid around the heart, pericarditis, heart attacks. Hmm. So COVID affected people directly in a negative way, both directly and indirectly. But again, I was referring to after this crisis right. is over, I think we're going to be able to deliver health care to all communities equally. Yeah, I definitely see that. Now, tell me, I'm going to walk into your office. Tell me the thing I can do, number one. It's got to be, obviously, exercise. But what foods should I be avoiding or so it comes down to risk factors. What are the risk factors for coronary artery disease? Smoking is probably the worst thing you could do. Most people think of smoking is bad for your lungs, but it's really bad for your heart, your legs, peripheral vascular. Diabetes is another one. Diabetes affects all arteries. So diabetes and smoking are two things that you can do to help control. Smoking, you stop smoking. And diabetic, you see your doctor, watch your weight, exercise, get your sugar under control. And if you do that, you're doing a tremendous amount for risk modification. Obviously, diet, exercise, eating the right things. So you want to eat things low in fat. You want to keep your caloric intake down and stay trim and exercise. All those things will help you. Invariably, though, some people have genetic problems where they just have a family history of heart disease. They do everything right. And you, you hear of the marathon runner sometimes just having a heart attack. Mm -hmm. So despite doing everything right, you still need to see your doctor to get tests, to check your cholesterol, to check tests to see if you have any buildup of blockages. Oh, uh, doctor. Excellent advice, as always. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.